for human health if there are genes like this in humans. Basically, what you eat can affect your future generations. So you're not only what you eat, potentially what your mother ate, and possibly even what your grandparents ate. So how do you go to humans to do this experiment when you have these mice and they're genetically identical on purpose? That's so right. So who is your perfect lab human? Well, then we look for identical humans, which are identical twins. 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 And that brings us to the reason why we're showing you Spanish twins. In 2005, they participated in a groundbreaking study in Madrid. Its aim? To show just how identical epigenetically they are or aren't. One of the questions of twins is that if my twin has this disease, I will have the same disease. And genetics uh, tell us that there is a high risk of developing the same disease, but it's not really uh, sure they're going to have it because our genes are just part of the story. Something has to regulate these genes. And part of the explanation is epigenetics. Estella wanted to see if the twins' epigenomes might account for their differences. To find out, he and his team collected cells from 40 pairs of identical twins, age 3 to 74. Then began the laborious process of dissolving the cells until all that was left were wispy strands of DNA, the master molecule that contains our genes. Next, researchers amplified fragments of the DNA until the genes themselves became detectable. Those that had been turned off epigenetically appear as dark pink bands on the gel. Now, notice what happens when the genes from a pair of twins are cut out and overlapped. The results are far from subtle, especially when you compare the epigenomes of two sets of twins that differ in age. Here on the left is the overlapped DNA of six-year-old Javier and Carlos. The yellow indicates where their gene expression is identical. On the right is the DNA of 66-year-old Ana Marie and Clotilde. In contrast to the younger twins, hardly any yellow shines through. Their epigenomes have changed dramatically. The study suggests that as twins age, epigenetic differences accumulate, especially when their lifestyles differ. One of the main findings of our research is that epigenomes can change in function of what we eat, of what we smoke, of what we drink. And this is one of the key uh, differences between epigenetics and genetics. You know? You know? As the chemical tags that control our genes change, cells can become abnormal, triggering diseases like cancer. Take a disorder like MDS, cancer of the blood and bone marrow. It's not a diagnosis you'd ever want to hear. When I went in, then he started patting my hand and he was going, your blood work does not look very good at all, and that I had um, MDS leukemia, and uh, that there was not a cure for it, and basically I had six months uh, to live. Was epigenetics the reason? Could the silencing of critical genes turn normal cells into cancerous ones? It's scary to think that a few misplaced tags can kill you. But it's also good news, because we've traditionally viewed cancer as a disease stemming solely from broken genes. And it's a lot harder to fix damaged genes than to rearrange epigenetic tags. In fact, we already have a few drugs that will work. Recently, Sandra Shelby and Roy Cantwell participated in one of the first clinical trials using epigenetic therapy. The idea of epigenetic therapy is to stay away from killing the cell. Rather, what we are trying to do is diplomacy. 
trying to change the instructions of the cancer cells, reminding the cell, hey, you're a human cell, you shouldn't be behaving this way. And we try to do that by reactivating genes. The results have been incredible. And I didn't have really any horrible side effects. I am in remission and going in the plus direction is a whole lot better than the minus direction. In fact, half the patients in the trial are now in remission. But while it may be easier to fix our epigenome than our genome, messing it up is easier too. We've got to get people thinking more about what they do. They have a responsibility for their epigenome. Their genome they inherit, but their epigenome they potentially can alter, and particularly that of their children. And that brings in responsibility, but it also brings in hope. You're not necessarily stuck with this. You can alter this.